what will happen at the merge, very, very basically. So we are changing the security mechanism which secures the Ethereum blockchain, which is very important because there are many financial instruments built on top of it and other applications which are very valuable. So um, the mechanisms we talk about, proof of work, proof of stake, they are all about security. Um, and it's effectively, it's to do with what's the cost of attacking the network. Uh, so under proof of work, the cost of attacking the network is acquiring um, uh, enough equipment, ASIC, specialized ASICs and GPUs and so forth, and burning enough electricity to overwhelm the existing security. Justin mentioned, uh, to put it in other terms, we're um, paying 5 million Ether per year um, to secure the current Ethereum network, and that's issued to miners, and they're spending it on hardware and on electricity and they're having to sell that ether to pay yeah. for, for, for that. So that's costing us $15 billion a year, and that's the cost of attacking the network. If you want to attack the current proof of work network, you need to acquire that much equipment and uh, burn that much power. So we're changing that, we're moving to proof of stake, mm -hmm. and we'll, we can talk about the reasons yeah. why, but, if, but one of the reasons is we get um, as good or better security mm -hmm. for much less cost. So we will be, um, uh, for 10% of the cost, half a yep. million Ether per year, we will have uh, as much economic security as Ethereum does today. So we, we cut down the cost of security by a factor of 10. So that, that's one motivation. Yeah. For me, the, the main motivation, however, and the reason I kind of got into this space in the first place is the much more um, imperative um, environmental mm -hmm. uh, considerations. Um, in proof of work, all the miners are competing, they're, they're burning this power all over the world. It uses as much as a small country um, to, uh, to secure the network. Um, and this is completely unnecessary. We have much better technology now. We can do the same job with 99.95% um, less power. So we can reduce the power usage of the network by a factor of 2,000 yep. and achieve the same goal. And for me, this is an, a no-brainer. I mean, we have to do this yeah. um, because not to do so would be yeah. immoral. Yeah, I think every time that we're, dis we're discussing is always about like sustainability, mm. uh, scalability and security, but you're so passionate about the sustainability side. And by the way, so you mentioned like the, the, the proof of stake and the proof of work, just for the people out there. Mm. What are the big difference in, in, in two, three sentences? So it's about, about the costs. Uh, in proof of work, um, if you want to be involved in the network and earn rewards, you have to um, buy equipment and buy electricity. Under proof of stake, you buy the underlying asset. So in this case, Ether, the token of Ethereum, and you put down a stake in the protocol, uh, and that's your investment. So um, that then gives you a right to participate in voting for what happens on the network in terms of which blocks uh, on the network are acceptable. Uh, and so forth. So you get to build the, the Ethereum chain. So you're securing it in that way. Yeah. Um, and as long as at least half of the stake on the network is honest, uh, then the, the, yeah. the chain is secure. Got it, got it. So, and you mentioned before something that's very interesting because obviously this is not a binary uh, progression, right? It's not a zero one. It's a, it's a testing, testing, testing. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned before in your answer, like we have been te testing it. And uh, can you actually make us understanding when you're saying we are testing it, what, what exactly do you mean? Well, this has been under development for a very long time, so <laughs> like five or six years we've been kind of working on this uh, and it's evolved over time. But uh, finally we've settled on a design which mm -hmm. we believe is you know, practical and we, and we can deliver. Yep. Um, so about a year and a half ago we stood up a, a thing called a beacon chain. That, that's the kind of name it ended up with. This is a proof of stake network which has been running for all that time is currently secured by about 11 million ether so um, I don't know 35 billion dollars worth of value but today it doesn't do anything I mean it, it just runs itself it does proof of stake on itself and it produces blocks but it doesn't run any transactions you can't run DeFi on it or you can't you know um, trade NFTs on it it just sits there sustaining itself Alongside that, we have the proof of work network, which has been running for uh, six years or so. And um, this merge that we talk about, this is where we bring the two together. So uh, the proof of work network, Ethereum One, um, gets transferred onto this proof of stake network, merged into the, 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 the structure. This is why we call it the merge. 
and then at that point we turn off proof of work and it's gone forever. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm hearing a lot about, you know, the consensus engine, right? And uh, I just want to turn back to you, Justin. And, uh, you know, basically we're swapping this consensus engine. Like, what should, uh, should we think this about, like, is that a fundamental change uh, on, on how Ethereum is secured? I remember in, in a podcast, I don't remember Bankless or, or, or something like that, uh, that you were mentioning, like, the, the function of cost of attack and the, the part of slashing. So you want to build on those kind of two concepts. I think that's might be useful. Right. So to, to build on what, what Ben said, um, we're, we're swapping the engine. Yeah. And just to give like a, a, a metaphor, imagine a car which had the, has this, this, this gasoline engine. So about a year and a half ago, we added a second engine with running in parallel, uh, which is maybe an electric engine. And this electric engine is much more efficient. Um, you know, for 100 miles, let's say, it, it, it only costs you know, $10 as opposed to you know, $100, let's say. Um, but right now, the wheels are connected to the gasoline engine. Yeah. And what we're going to do at the merge is connect the wheels to the electric engine and shut down the, 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 the proof of work engine. Now, in terms of the advantages of this electric engine, the proof of stake, one, we've already mentioned the economic efficiency, meaning we get much more bang for the buck, so much more security per unit of, of, of cost. Um, and you know, Ben mentioned we have 10 times less issuance, but then the question is how do we measure security? And one of the metrics, the primary metric, mm -hmm. is what's called economic security. Economic security is the amount of money that needs to be spent by an attacker to overwhelm consensus and attack it. Now, in the context of proof of work on Ethereum today, it's roughly $10 billion. And with proof of stake today, it's roughly $35 billion. Okay. Um, so, not only do we have 10 times less cost, but we have 3.5 times more security, so it's kind of a 35x improvement over the status quo. But this is actually just, in a way, the tip of the iceberg. And the reason is that these engines, you know, engines break down, it happens. Of course. Um, and when they do break down, we want to be able to repair them. And it turns out that proof of stake has this healing mechanism, this repairability, mm -hmm. which proof of work doesn't. And the reason is that if an attacker manages to break the engine of proof of work, they can repeatedly do the attack over and over and over again, and basically discourage anyone from really participating um, in, in trying, in even attempting to secure yeah. the network. On the other hand, with proof of stake, we have this mechanism called slashing whereby we can precisely identify the attackers because they are cryptographically identified yep. um, and we can penalize them, basically remove their stake. And in doing so, we're in a position where we're left with honest players and the malicious players have left. And not only that, but we've also reduced the supply of ETH. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like you're getting super yeah, a lot of positive uh, transaction. But Ben, is what basically like Justin said right now, is that the extent to security improvements? Because I remember like you were mentioning like this with uh, with the brewer um, rewards, the finality. You want, you want to speak on those kind of like the, the three anti-correlation mechanism? I think that's, that's quite cool stuff. Proof of stake gives us a lot more levers to, to, to play with uh, in the protocol. So uh, one of the opportunities it gives us is around client diversity, a topic close to my heart as one of the kind of, kind of client developers. Um, and what this means is that uh, the network relies on multiple um, pieces of software. They're all doing the same job, but they're all built by different teams. Um, and if, if one of them uh, has a bug, has a failure, then the others can carry the network. So it adds resilience to, to what we're doing. And we have incentives in the protocol to encourage people to run um, diverse clients. And so uh, if many people are running the same client software and there's a failure in that software, the, the penalties and the punishments are greater. Yep. So you lose more of your stake if something goes wrong with that client. So the safest option is to run, you know, we have effectively four production clients currently. If they all have 25% of the share of the um, stake each that they manage, then the network is very resilient um, to, to client failure and the people running uh, th those clients uh, also have a lot of safety. So that's an example of one of the, the mechanisms. Um, 
finality. Shall mm -hmm. we talk about uh, that? Sure. Um, yeah. th this is a really nice difference from proof of work protocol. So um, the idea is that you know, we're, we're building this chain of blocks, yeah. uh, but what can sometimes happen in proof of work is that you can have what we call a reversion. So a block that you thought was there containing transactions that you thought had executed suddenly vanishes. It's a different block becomes the, uh, the, the block that's, that extends the chain and the one that you thought was there gets uh, orphaned or uncled or whatever the terminology you want to use. So um, this means that, for example, an exchange can't really be sure that a transaction has actually happened. Now what they do is a sort of, they have a sort of heuristic and they wait for like 15 blocks or 30 blocks in Ethereum, so you've got to wait this period of time. And you say, well, it's been around long enough, it's almost certainly not going to get reverted. Yeah. But in an attack it could be. In proof of stake, we have this concept of economic finality, where the network, after a period of time, can declare a block final. We will never revert that block. Those transactions are in the chain, they will always be in the chain, and we will never change them. And th this is a really nice property. It, it takes a little while, it takes about 13 and a half yep. minutes, which is perhaps a bit longer than we'd like. Um, and in future, we might do some, some work on that, but that's the, the, the current design. Uh, so you can you can be sure that uh, there will be no rewriting of history uh, ever, which is, or if there is, then the economic cost of it is, is massive. We're talking tens of billions of dollars yep. uh, to, to revert the chain.